There are over 700 types of Pokemon in the Pokedex today with the addition of almost 100 new types from Pokemon X and Y. Like all Pokemon games, X and Y have added some great and some not so great Pokemon to the list. So this is going to be a list of my top six best and top six worst Pokemon, one from each generation, from red and blue through to X and Y. Generation 1 has some of the most iconic Pokemon designs in the series. Pikachu remains the star of the show and all of the advertising. Mewtwo has been incredibly popular since his inception. But for me, I would say that the best Pokemon from Generation 1 was Starmie. Starmie is kind of mysterious looking. He's a blue starfish with a gem in the middle. He looks almost otherworldly and mysterious, and his abilities back that up. Not only is he fast, he's an incredible special attacker, with not only his stabbed water moves, but he also learns type coverage such as Thunderbolt and Psychic, further compounding his mysterious appearance. However, Generation 1 wasn't all Pikachus and Starmies. There were some terrible Pokemon. My first thought for this slot was coughing. But I thought, the only reason why I'm kind of down on coughing is because his evolution is just three of him. And that would also rope in Magnemite and Diglett, who Doug Trio is still a really terrible evolution but I had to step back and think of all 150 original, and one stood out as particularly poor. Muck, what are you? You're a puddle. Not only are you a puddle, you didn't even change from your pre-evolution. You're just a big grimer. You're not new, you're not special, and no one likes you. Generation two, Pocket Monsters two, gold and silver. My personal favorite generation added 100 new Pokemon, from Chikorita to Celebi, but not all of them were great. Unlike the previous generation, where many of the great Pokemon were just kind of okay and only had a handful of standouts, choosing my favorite generation 2 Pokemon was a chore but I had to go with the one Generation 2 Pokemon who has found a home on every team of mine since. Skarmory. Skarmory is a giant bird with swords for wings. I mean, stats and move pool aside, it's got swords for wings, and there's nothing you can do to compete with that. On the other hand, I have to say the worst Generation 2 Pokemon goes to Politoed. Politoed why do you exist? I mean, maybe you were an experiment to show off, you know, trade item evolution. Because, you know, the king's rock to get a polytoad. But you, there's no reason anyone would want you over a, over a polyrath. Why would anyone ever choose you over polyrath? I know Generation 5 gave you Drizzle, but now Drizzle only lasts for five turns and you would have to take up your hold item for that, and you're not even a good Pokemon outside of Drizzle. So, why do you exist? And also, in a world full of blue frog-type Pokemon, you're green. Whoever heard of a green frog? Generation 3 was a controversial generation. It was a bit of a continuity reboot to a, a digital dark age. Opinions were very harshly split on Ruby and Sapphire. However, Ruby and Sapphire introduced my favorite Pokemon in the entire series. The fairy psychic type Gardevoir. Now, Gardevoir is, on its own, an incredible Pokemon. It's got a beautiful design. It's got great type coverage. I use it as a special sweeper on all of my teams, but 
the internet has kind of taken Gardevoir in a direction I never, ever want to see Pokemon taken. Do not Google Gardevoir. Unfortunately, Generation 3, along with my favorite Pokemon, introduced some of the most forgettable Pokemon in the series. And Generation 4 might have more kind of forgettable Pokemon. Like, who's ever heard of a Lumineon before? But uh, this is a Pokemon who didn't even cross my mind until I looked at a list to pick my least favorite Generation 3 Pokemon. Because I forgot he was in the game. Generation 3's bottom of the barrel goes to Wishcash. Did you remember Wishcash existed? I didn't. Generation 4 brought the Pokemon games to the Nintendo DS and overloaded us with 100,000 legendaries, but they are not present on this list. Generation 4 added one of the coolest gimmick Pokemon and one of the only gimmick Pokemon that can be used effectively. Generation 3 had their cast form, which was similar, but was really terrible stat-wise, and weather didn't last super long, so he was very gimmicky. But Generation 4's top slot goes to Rotom. I just finished a playthrough of X and Y using a Rotom, and his ability to switch between his forms and excellent type coverage, with a unique to him typing of Ghost Electric, Rotom takes the top slot. I said earlier that Generation 4 had a lot of forgettable, gimmicky Pokemon. And what do you get when you combine a bad weather gimmick with a forgettable moveset and low stats? You get Cherim. Hide your face in shame, Cherim, because we don't like you, and no one else likes you. Generation 5 was an interesting beast. Until its sequels in Black and White 2, Black and White had no previous Pokemon. The entire Pokedex, before you beat the Elite Four, was entirely new. Which lent the games an intentional similarity to Generation 1, to Pokemon Red and Blue. All new Pokemon, all new characters, no callbacks, and it was divisive. I personally loved it, but not everyone did, and I can understand why. My top slot goes to another Pokemon that I use competitively very often, the Bug Fire Sun God, Volcarona. Volcarona's got a massive special attack stat, with stabbed fire moves and bug moves, including Bug Buzz. Volcarona is despite a crippling weakness to rock, a god among Pokemon. Generation 4 may have introduced a ton of legendary Pokemon, but none of their legendary Pokemon even came close to how terrible these were. Not even Cresselia. Generation 5's bottom slot goes to the three-way tie between Tornadus, Thunderous, and Landorus. Not only do they have a stupid looking design, they used it three times. I don't care how good these Pokemon stats are or their ability to change form, they are just so ugly. I know they're based on Japanese gods, Raijin, Fujin, etc. Just look at them. I mean really. Generation 6, Pokemon X and Y was released on the 3DS five months ago as of this recording, to near universal praise, with Metacritic scores hovering around the 90%, a Famitsu score of 39 out of 40, Pokemon X and Y were a landmark for the Pokemon series. One thing that new Pokemon in X and Y added was official versions of previously fan-only strategies. Generation 6 best Pokemon goes to Agislash. Agislash's pre-evolution Hone Edge was disregarded when he was first announced as a poor gimmicky design. He's just a sword. But he's a ghost sword. 
and he's amazing. He evolves into Agislash, which is at long last an official version of the fan favorite Power Trick Shuckle, being able to switch his attack, defense, and his special attack and special defense stats with his unique ability of stance change and his unique protect clone called King's Shield. Agislash makes a fantastic tank and you never know if you're going to be running your head into a wall or if that wall is going to hit you back. Finally, we come to the worst of Generation 6. Generation 6 has very few bad Pokemon, in my opinion. Most of them have some sort of use or niche or something that they can do very well. All of them, except for one. Generation 6, your worst Pokemon is Furfru. Furfru exists only as a gimmick in that you can change its hairstyle. There's a cafe dedicated to this stupid normal type who has no benefits except maybe an alright defensive typing. But just, why are you here? You, we can change what you look like. We've been doing that for generations. We can go all the way back to Generation 3 and change what cast form looked like. Special mention goes to Furfru in the trading card game, where he's not a very good card. He's a bit of an energy absorber. But his ability, negating 20 damage from every attack, is just a pain. Alright, that's it for my top 6 and bottom 6 of each generation. What do you think? Do you agree? Disagree? What are your top and bottom Pokemon from each generation? Leave them in the comments below, or to the side, or above, or wherever YouTube is putting them these days, and I will look forward to seeing what you think.